Hi there, this is Mr. Ed with another episode of Mr. Ed Makes. And in this episode, I'm going to demonstrate how I make a wire figure with a single piece of wire. Um, I'm just going to basically talk through this demonstration. I'm not going to get into detail how I make it. I think if, uh, if you slow down the video, if you stop it, you can get a good, pretty good idea how it's made without me describing every little thing that I do. And plus, you're going to be able to make it more your own that way. But uh, when I first started making wire armatures, uh, they were made of lots of pieces of wire that I would cut and loop and fit together into really sophisticated joints. And they, of course, had their limitations. Um, they really wouldn't hold their shape very well. They weren't particularly durable. And they, they just didn't look very, they didn't look very neat. Um, I thought about getting armatures in a store to um, just draw to, but you can't really build on those. They're kind of expensive to just put clay on. Um, so I started making my own, and I wanted to make one that was really durable, that you could pose in different ways and not have to worry about it breaking or worry about it losing its shape and I remember as a kid there were these um, toys uh, maybe a, a cost a dollar it was like Bugs Bunny and he'd be made of rubber and you could pose him in different ways and inside of the rubber was wire that would help keep his shape whichever shape you put it into so that kind of inspired me a little bit um, that I needed to use wire and I needed to use one piece or a continuous piece because if I used bits of pieces to make my figure it wasn't as durable and it wouldn't hold up as well so I got the idea to uh, design it this way by thinking of how I would draw a figure using one line and when I imagined that, I tried a few times, and I came up with how I should twist this wire so that I could use the wire efficiently. It looked, it had a nice symmetry, and it you could bend it where you needed it to bend. And I got the idea for the loops, for the joints. So if you'll notice, the elbow loop, the folding part, is the outside of the loop, and the bending part is the loop itself and that's the same for the knee and the hips and the shoulders uh, when I got to the wrist and ankle I, I thought the loops looked weird and they really didn't help at that point plus uh, you're really not doing so much of the posing with this part of the figure as you are the hips shoulders knees and elbows so I just used twists for those. And when I, when I was first making these, they were much smaller. They were made of a thinner wire that was easier to, uh, to twist and sculpt with. You could use aluminum, a heavier aluminum wire for this, maybe a, a 16 gauge aluminum wire. And it the only thing about aluminum is it's not very forgiving. So if you bend it in a way that you don't want it to bend, you you run the risk of it snapping if you try to undo that. Uh, with steel wire, it's more forgiving. It will actually kind of stretch a little bit, so it'll go back into its shape without running the risk of it snapping. It will get kind of get a weak over time, but uh, not as much as aluminum. So I use steel, plus it's magnetic, and you you get the benefits of being able to use small magnets to attach these to refrigerators and what have you. So I, I kind of like the steel over the aluminum, but it is really hard to work with. I, I do a substantial amount of swearing when I make, make these because I, I am constantly fighting with the spool of wire trying to resist the the tendency for the wire to want to go its direction and me wanting to keep it in place so I can actually work with it. So you're you're constantly fighting with the wire. 
and I've been doing this for over a decade now and I still have not figured out a way to work with the wire any easier. I've tried all kinds of ways and it's just a pain no matter what but it's one of those things you have to go through. Uh, it's like working with oils. You have the cleanup with oil can kind of be a mess and a lot of people don't like it. As the same with wire. It can be hard to work with. A lot of people don't like it and uh, it will put blisters on your hands if you try to make too many of these too quickly. Um, I have some pretty good calluses built up but it, it will give you a workout. In um, earlier versions of this I had a single wrap. I would have at this point cut the wire from the sculpture and it would be finished. It'd be ready to, to do whatever with. But I've found in the past that this wasn't very um, durable and it would lose its shape easily and it was difficult for people who have purchased these to reshape them because a lot of them aren't artists. They don't really understand how to get it to go back into the shape that they bought it in because I'll pose them in different ways and I feel really bad for them that you know their dog got a hold of it and twisted its head out of shape you know and they can't twist it back so I decided I would try to to add some heft and I d designed this way of wrapping it again using a single piece of wire I haven't cut the wire at any point I'm still running along that spool I'm just going down each one of the limbs now with the twist and then I just go back up and follow in between and it kind of wraps it. I imagine I could use this technique to make kind of a rag doll out of a heavy rope because the coils once you've locked everything together will kind of hold the arm in place where it will bend at the joints. I, I really want to try that if anyone watching this video gives it a try or if they've seen someone try that I would really love to see that done because I think it would really look amazing. In the final stages of this design I decided to try to attach the ribs more to the spine before it was just kind of floating in there. So um, I twisted it against itself and what this does is it kind of locks each part of the ribs to the spine in a really neat way and when you go back up and reverse it it has this cool weaving pattern that makes the spine really stand out so it doesn't just look like a piece of wire it looks like something that could carry the weight of this this figure when I designed the pelvis I I wanted to create a front pelvis part and then the the back pelvis part that holds all the muscles for where the legs and the the buttocks are and it's really hard to do that with wire so I tried to create as much surface area as I could by stretching it out I did the same thing with the shoulder I stretched that out to make more of a shoulder blade shape and then when you go through and wrap it in wire it gives it the the dimension that it needs to really look like it's a bone you know it's not just wire it's kind of structurally sound Twisting this wire up and fighting it the entire time is uh, its quite an experience, but it's worth it. Uh, I kind of zone out when I'm doing it, so every once in a while I'll go off camera. I'll forget, oh yeah, I'm trying to tape this so everyone can see it, and I'll pull it back into frame. But it is one of those processes where you can just kind of, you don't really have to think so much about it and you're repeating steps so you kind of get into a flow and I've been making these for a while so I'm I've got it down pretty pretty well it takes me about 30 to 45 minutes depending on how how much time I have to spend fighting the wire <laughs> that seems to be one of the biggest time wasters making this in spite of how challenging it is to work with the wire and you can get blisters on your fingers and you it will put some muscles on your hands the end product is really fun kids love them although I really wouldn't recommend 
making them for kids to play with because the wire unless it's aluminum the steel wire actually can contain trace elements of lead and other things that they can put in their mouth uh, I wash my hands when I'm done working with this I should probably wear gloves since I do work with it a lot but I do take the time to wash my hands and not put my hands in my eyes and my mouth while I'm working with this metal uh, but it's fun to play with and shaping it in just about any way you can pose a human I've I've even had them doing back bends and I'll put up an info card to a video that I did an art tour has several examples of uh, what you can do with these I've put lights in them I've had them as uh, candle holders incense holders at the end of the video you'll see an example of a business card holder that I actually set out for um, people to find me on Facebook um, but there you, you have it uh, one of the most popular poses is bending down on the knee it seems to be the most stable and that's the one that I use a lot well if you're still watching you must like this video so be sure to give me a thumbs up and comment below and tell me what you think I still I don't get tons of comments so I still read every single one of those and I appreciate everything uh, viewers have to say uh, if you haven't subscribed yet please do so hit that bell so you'll get a notification whenever I upload if you have subscribed thank you so much for your support I'm getting close to 100 subscribers and it takes every single one of you for me to reach as many viewers as I can so uh, thank you until next time bye bye